Hello, and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Uh, today, I'll be going over this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week. Uh, for the full problem in the solution transcript, there will be a link in the description of this video. Uh, this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week is winter themed uh, because of the holidays. Uh, and what we're going to talk about is the Koch snowflake and a generalization of the Koch snowflake. Uh, so the, uh, if you saw the problem of the week, um, if you haven't seen the problem of the week written out, I encourage you to look at it so that you understand how these snowflakes are made. Uh, but what happens is you start off, well, with the original Koch snowflake, you start off with an equilateral triangle, which hopefully you can kind of see where the triangle is here. And then on each line segment, you divide it into thirds, and then the middle third, you draw another equilateral triangle, which is um, uh, with uh, segments one third of the original segment. And you keep doing that onto infinity, and you get the Koch snowflake, which has a infinite perimeter, but has a finite area. And the first part of the problem was to find the area of the original Koch snowflake, but we're going to skip over that for now and come back to it and move on to part B, which is the generalized Koch snowflake, where you start off with any n-sided regular polygon, and then on each line segment you do um, any other regular n-sided polygon. And the problem was to find the a, uh, a formula for uh, the area of a generalized Koch snowflake. And so let's do that. And then we'll come back to part A and use the formula to find what the area of this is. So to start this problem, we're going to look um, at just one side of the generalized Koch snowflake. And since we use squares here, we're just going to uh, use squares here, even though they're just placeholders for any n-sided uh, regular polygon. So the first iteration, which we'll call um, the area of this first iteration is A1. Uh, and this is just equal to the area of this regular n-sided polygon, which if you watch the problem of the week this week, we derived a formula for that, which is right here. So we'll just use that instead of rederiving it. Uh, so we have n over 4, which doesn't change. S is the side length. Uh, to simplify things, we're just going to have the original side length be 1. Uh, so we have one third for the side length of this, since we split it up into thirds for the Koch snowflake. So we have one over three squared, which we can just simplify to one over nine, and then multiply that by the cotangent of 180 degrees over n. Then what happens is we keep iterating this, and we get to the second iteration, and we'll say that A2 is the um, area of these additional things, additional areas we added. So we have to count how many there's going to be of these little squares. If you see, if we added any n-sided regular polygon, we will have n minus 1 available sides, since we don't count this side, plus 2 more. So we'll have n minus 1 plus 2 or n plus 1, many uh, additions. And then we have to find the area of this. So we still have n over 4. Uh, s, in this case, is a third of a third, or a ninth. And so we'll have 1 over 9 squared times the cotangent of 180 over n again. And then we'll just do one more iteration. If we you know, add all these polygons in there, uh, we'll define A3 to be the areas added on this third iteration, iteration or um, the area of all these smaller squares. And what we have to do is find out how many there are again. Hopefully you can see this is a self-similar uh, structure. So there's going to be n plus 1, many locations here. Um, and then for each, since we already have n plus 1 locations, we're going to have 
n plus 1 squared many. And then we can keep going. We have n over 4. This is a third of a third of a third. So we have 1 over 9 to the third times the cotangent of 180 degrees over n. And therefore, if we take this iteration, these iterations on to infinity, we'll call it a prime as that area. And this is just the sum, um, i equal to 1 to infinity, of a i. And we can rewrite this by factoring out some of the similar terms in each one. So in each one, there's going to be an n over 4. So we can factor that out. We're going to have a cotangent of 180 degrees over n in each one. We can take that one out. And then we have to put this in uh, summation location, uh, notation. And so we have an n plus 1 and a 1 over 9. And you'll see there's no n plus 1 in the original one. So we can put it as n plus 1 to the i minus 1 power. And then 1 over i, uh, 1 over n, sorry, 1 over 9 to the ith power. Uh, but it would be nice if we could put these all under one exponent. And we can do that since n plus 1 uh, to the i minus 1 power is just equal to n plus 1 to the i-th power over n plus 1. And so we can take out this 1 over n plus 1 and write it as so. 1 over 4 And we get this is the area of this taken to infinity. But what we can do is simplify the summation notation uh, using one of the fundamental formulas, which is this. If you have a geometric series, as long as a is less than 1, uh, the summation from 0 to infinity is given by this. So if we just take this up here. As long as we have that n is less than 8, such so that this is less than 1, we have it as 1 over 1 minus n plus 1 over 9. But notice that this is from i equals to 1 to infinity, and this is from uh, 0 to infinity. So what we just have to do is subtract out this term when it's 0, which you should see that if i is 0, it's just 1. So we subtract 1 from it. And this will simplify to n plus 1 over 8 minus n. And what we can do is plug this back in here. We get a little bit of cancellation. Uh, and we get that a prime is equal to um, one over four times n over eight minus n times the cotangent of one hundred and eighty over n. And so we have a prime. We're almost there. We just have to take this one segment, and turn it into uh, this, which is pretty easy. So 
we have this area. And now the area of this on an m-sided polygon will just be m times this. So we'll have a is the final area. So we have m times a prime plus the area of this big m-sided polygon, which we can just use this is m. Um, this is going to be sides 1, as we said. So that's just m over 4 times the cotangent of 180 over m. And this is the formula. This is the final formula, actually. Um, I'll just write it out in its entirety. We have A. The area of this generalized Coke snowflake is equal to M times N over 4, 8 minus N. And this is the final generalized formula, where m is the number of sides of the original polygon, and n is the number of sides of uh, the polygon that you're adding onto it. And so when um, m and n are equal to 3, you'll get a is equal to 9 over 20 the cotangent of 60 degrees oh, this is just 60 degrees again uh, and this simplifies to uh, root 3 over 4 uh, and so that's part A we did part B and that is this advanced knowledge problem of the week. Uh, I encourage you to try different generalizations of the Coke snowflake, uh, maybe different lengths of sides. I don't know. There's a lot to unpack here. You could do it completely differently than I did. Uh, but that is this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week. For more problems like this, you can click right here. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can click right there. To go to the centerofmath.org, you can click right there. And if you're on a mobile device, there is an I in the top right-hand corner of the screen with all of these same links. Thank you very much for watching, and happy holidays.